Okay, so it's time to see how you can use a convenient tool to convert models that are made from the Python version of TensorFlow that typically have the extensions of .pb or .h5 to the TensorFlow.js JSON format. Now with a TensorFlow.js command line converter, you can enjoy using such models with the reach and scale of the web and bring even more models to the JavaScript community. In this subchapter, you'll learn how to use a CoLab notebook to load and then save a popular Python research model. You'll then learn how to install and use the TensorFlow.js converter on the model you saved from Python in the first step. But first, what's a CoLab notebook? Well, as Python typically runs on the server-side environment via the command line terminal, often on the Linux operating system, Python developers expose an easy to use web interface so they could take notes as they code to try things out and make it easier to share with others who are learning how to do something. Now these notebooks essentially contain snippets of code that you can execute one by one in order to see the resulting outputs after each step in the browser. Essentially, the commands you type on the web page will be sent to a real Linux server in the cloud to be executed and the results printed to the screen. And on the note of Linux, which is just another type of operating system that's a very popular choice for server-side environments, everything you see in the notebooks in this tutorial could also be executed directly on a Linux server if you have one. Now, one popular distribution of Linux is called Ubuntu and often used on Google Cloud servers like Compute Engine to power servers running Node.js for many of the websites you know and love. And if you're familiar with setting up one and installing the dependencies you may need in order to run the example code, then you might prefer to use that if you know what you're doing, either in the cloud or on your local machine. Now, it should also be noted that users on Windows 10 or greater, for example, can actually install Ubuntu from the Microsoft Store for free and run it within the Windows environment very conveniently without the need to hire hardware from a cloud provider. So if you have that, feel free to try that out as well. However, one of the great things about Colabs is that you can connect to a backend server that's already been set up with Python and TensorFlow installed and configured correctly, which takes away a lot of the setup work, which can sometimes be non-trivial to do if you're new to using the command line and Linux. For this reason, this tutorial will stick to using Colabs in order to keep things simple for all users who are taking this course. Okay, so first, make sure you're logged in with your Google account and head on over to colab.research.google.com. You'll be presented with a pop-up window like the one shown. Find the button to create a new notebook and click on it. Once the new notebook is created, you should see an empty project like the one you see here. The first thing to do is to connect your session to a server-side backend to use for executing the code snippets you're about to write. You can do this by clicking the button named Connect at the top right to connect to a hosted runtime in the cloud. When the backend server has successfully been allocated, you'll see its RAM and disk usage as shown on this slide. You're now ready to start executing some Python code. Now you'll notice there's a box with a play icon in the main body of the document shown. In this area, you can write Python code or even regular terminal commands as you'll see later. Now typically, researchers group similar blocks of code together to do a complete thing. So you can create multiple steps of execution that people can learn from in bite-sized chunks. So first, go ahead and copy the code shown here into this box. Now, learning Python is beyond the scope of this course, and you do not need to know it for this chapter. However, even as a JavaScript developer, you can probably take a guess as to what's going on, given your prior experience with working with machine learning models in JavaScript. Essentially, this code imports some libraries and then gets the mobile net v2 model with some hyperparameters specified, such as the expected input shape, the default pre-trained weights to load the model with, and the classifier activation type. Now go ahead and click the play button on the left to execute the code you just wrote. The libraries will be imported for the future code blocks to make use of, and the mobile net v2 model will be downloaded and stored in a variable called model. After a few seconds, you'll see the output appear at the bottom and when the code is finished executing, a small green tick is shown on the left-hand side of the code as shown. Now, if you copied something incorrectly, you might see an error message printed instead. Great, you now have the original Python mobile v 2 model loaded into memory to use. Next, let's dump its contents to the hard drive of the server. Now to do that, click on the plus code button near the top left to add a new code block as highlighted. At this point, you'll now have a new cell in which you can enter some new code to execute. Enter the following Python code to import the functions that allow you to save the model. 
Now once imported, you'll define a folder and file name to save the model to. In this case, you'll create a folder called MobileNet v2 inside of the system temp folder, and your file will be called saved underscore model dot h5, as you want to save a Keras model which uses the h5 format. Note that you could also use the extension .pb instead here if you wanted to use a TensorFlow saved model instead. But why do you want a Keras saved model here? Well, you saw in the last chapter, it's much more useful when dealing with layers models. By exporting to the H5 format, the TensorFlow.js converter can convert to a layers model. If you save to the PB format, it will end up being a graph model after the converter is used. So choose the right format for what you need speed of execution, or transfer learning ability in JavaScript. Okay, now go ahead and execute the second code cell that will save the model to disk. Again, after a few seconds, you'll see some output and a green tick when the execution is complete. In this case, a warning message shows up, but it's fine to ignore this particular warning. This is actually a normal part of the process. Now let's check the model is saved to the temp folder as expected. To do that, First, click on the file icon on the left bar as highlighted. The File System Explorer will now open, as shown, allowing you to browse the contents of the hard drive of the remote server that you're connected to. Navigate to the slash temp directory by clicking on the folder that takes you to the parent folder one level higher as highlighted. You'll then see a huge list of folders on the Linux file system as shown. And towards the bottom, you can then expand the temp folder as highlighted and note that you might need to scroll down to view it depending how tall your window is. Now clicking on the temp folder will show the folders contained inside of it, one of which will be the MobileNet v2 folder that you just created. Clicking on that folder, you should now see the newly created h5 file as shown. If you can see the produced h5 file, then you're ready to head on to the next step. Okay, so next, add another code block to your project as shown and paste the following code. Note that this code block starts with an exclamation point, meaning that it will be executing a terminal command instead of Python code. This command will use the pip3 package manager to install TensorFlow.js utilities for the Python ecosystem. Now pip is similar to npm, but for the Python ecosystem instead of node.js. Click on the play icon for this new line of code and wait a moment whilst it installs. This will print out quite a lot of data, but at the end, you should see that TensorFlow.js has been installed successfully as shown on this slide. Once complete, add one more code block and add the two lines of code illustrated on this slide. The first line of code is a terminal command to change directory to the MobileNet v2 folder that you just created. The second line of code actually calls the TensorFlow.js converter, which takes several parameters. The first parameter is the input format of the file that you want to convert. You already know that this is in the H5 Keras format, so in this case, the input format is Keras. In a similar fashion, you can also specify the output format you want to convert to. Here, you want the tfjs underscore layers underscore model format as shown to create a model suitable for transfer learning. Next, specify where the input file is located. In this case, it's in the slash temp slash mobile vnet v2 folder with the name of saved underscore model dot h5. Finally, specify the folder you want to output the converted files to. Here, you can specify a folder called tfjs underscore mobile net v2 also within the temp directory. Okay, so now it's time to hit the play button and see what pops out. Once the cell has completed executing and a green check is shown, open up the temp folder once again. You should now see the new tfjs underscore mobile net v2 folder with the model.json and bin files inside that you're used to. If you can't see this right away, try closing the temp folder and then reopening it to force a refresh. You can now download each of the resulting files to your own hard drive by hovering over the file, clicking on the three dots that appear to the right of the file name, and then selecting download and saving the resulting file to your hard drive. Now on this note, it's worth noting that if you end up converting larger models in the future with even more binary output files to download, you might want to zip up all the files together into one file to save some time versus downloading them one at a time. And just to illustrate this, you can see here, I've added a new code block to zip up all the files on the right. Here I call the zip program on the command line to create a new zip file called modeldata.zip in the tfjs underscore mobile v2 folder, which contains all the files and folders that are currently contained within the tfjs underscore mobile v2 folder. Note the minus R at the start simply means recursively do this for all subfolders too, in case there are any of those. 
You can then see the new modeldata.zip file has been created on the left, which you can download in one click and unzip on your own computer to view the content in a much faster manner than downloading all the files individually, which is a lot more clicking. And now, just like before, you have a model.json and some bin files you can host on any web server and use in your web apps just like you did in prior chapters. And now you know how I generated the layers version of the MobileNet v2 model in the last coding session. Now, there are many Python Colab notebooks out there that are already written that you can then modify in order to save a trained machine learning model to disk, and then use the TensorFlow.js converter in much the same way for other model types too. And if for some reason you really don't want to touch the Python code, then usually the developer who made the Python model will be able to send you the resulting saved model files in the PB or H5 format, which you can then run through the converter yourself as you've seen. And just be sure to use the correct input and output formats depending on the file type that they give you. It's also worth mentioning at this point that there'll be times when more complex models that compile down to use less common operations will not be supported for conversion. The browser-based version of TensorFlow.js is a complete rewrite of TensorFlow. And as such, we do not currently support all of the low-level operations, or ops for short, that the TensorFlow C++ API has. There are thousands after all. Naturally, over time, more are being added as we grow. And the core ops in the C++ APIs become more stable, as some of them are more experimental than others, and may be subject to changes in the future. In these cases, there are two options. First, you can ask the original creator of the model not to use that op in favor of a more standard operation. And secondly, you could ask them to contribute the missing op to the TensorFlow.js project. We are open source after all. Now, if there's a particular op that keeps coming up as an issue for you for a certain type of model, you might want to consider submitting a feature request to the TensorFlow.js GitHub page detailing the use case, model details, and the impact it would have if it were supported. If you're curious to learn more about ops and contributing the missing ones, which is an advanced topic, check out some of the links on this slide. For those of you who may be from a less mathematical background, the link to create a feature request is shown at the bottom of this slide. That way, someone from the community or the TensorFlow.js team may see the request and be able to implement it for you. Now, at this point, it's worth heading over to the TensorFlow.js converter documentation over on GitHub to find the full suite of options that you can use when converting from Python to JavaScript. And there's a whole bunch of other useful options depending on your needs. Now, some of these advanced options are beyond the scope of this introductory course, but are pretty well documented. So it's worth a read to be aware that they actually exist. A good example of a more advanced option is when you might be trying to optimize models to take up less space, which is where things like quantization can come in handy. Quantizing a model essentially reduces the memory footprint it uses at the sacrifice of model accuracy. However, that might be an acceptable trade-off in some cases if you need to run on a mobile device, for example. Finally, if you happen to be running on Linux directly and not in a colab, you can also run the slightly friendlier version of the converter known as the TensorFlow.js wizard as shown in the command line terminal window. To do this, you can pip3 install TensorFlow.js in square brackets wizard and then call TensorFlow.js underscore wizard instead of the TensorFlow.js underscore converter command that you previously used and follow the on-screen prompts that it asks. For details about doing all this in Linux, check the linked code lab, not colab, that shows how to use this on Ubuntu. Great, you now know the basics of conversion. Let's put all of this into practice while also learning a new type of machine learning model, one that can deal with text and understand written language instead of images. See you in the next section. Mm -hmm.